Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on testing sphericity using SPSS. The assumption of sphericity is used for repeated measures ANOVA. And to test the assumption, we test the null hypothesis that the variances of the differences between all groups are equal. So taking a look at these fictitious data I have loaded in the data view in SPSS, you can see that I have an independent variable program with two levels, experimental and treatment as usual, and then three observations, three dependent variables, a pretest, a test that occurs six weeks later, and a post-test that occurs 12 weeks later. These all represent the same instrument. So we have these three dependent variables, and looking at this first case, participant 1001, these three scores would all be generated by that one participant. So these are within subjects. This is within subjects, all three of these dependent variables created by the same participant. So when we talk about the variances of the differences between all possible groups being equal, the groups we're talking about are these three dependent variables, not the independent variable, not the levels of the independent variable, but rather these three dependent variables. So I'm going to conduct two repeated measures ANOVAs, one that has just the three dependent variables here, the three scores, and then one that has the between subjects factor. And I'll show you how we test for sphericity using Mockley's test. So first I'm going to go to analyze the general linear model, and then repeated measures. And you can see this is what the first dialog looks like by default, it has within subject factor name and then the number of levels. So this is only the within subjects factor. This is not the independent variable. So in this case, let's assume that these tests, the pretest and the test that occurs six weeks after and 12 weeks after, let's assume that they're measuring depression. So I'm going to enter depression in there. So I'm going to change factor one, which is what is there by default, to depression. And the number of levels will be three, because we have three dependent variables. So I'll go down here and enter three, and then click add. So depression, and then three. Then I'm going to go down here and click define, the bottom left, define. And then I get the repeated measures dialog. And you can see it's already set up three within subjects variables, but they're blank. You have one, two, and three. So for the first one, I'm going to move over pretest. The next, the test that occurs six weeks after. And then for the last, for three, the test that occurs 12 weeks after. And for this first example, I'm not going to use a between subjects factor. Now to generate Mockley's test of sphericity, I don't need to make any changes under these buttons to the right. I just need to click OK and conduct the repeated measures ANOVA. And I'm going to move down to the Mockley's test of sphericity. And you can see here that we have a p-value for this statistic of 0.026. Now, Mockley's test of sphericity uses an alpha of 0 0.05. So this is a statistically significant result. This means we have violated the assumption of sphericity. In order to assume that we have sphericity, we'd have to have a value of greater than 0 0.05 here. So what can we do? when we violate the assumption of sphericity. Oftentimes when using parametric statistics, we note that some parametric statistics are robust to some violations of the assumptions associated with them. However, in the case of repeated measures ANOVA, repeated measures ANOVAs are sensitive to violations of sphericity. So we need to act when we have a 
statistically significant value. We can't just assume that the statistic is robust to sphericity because it's not. Fortunately, SPSS includes a few corrections that we can use in the event that we do violate sphericity. One is the greenhouse geyser and the other is the wind felt. Now here we have the values of epsilon for these statistics, not the p-values. That's down here in the test of within subjects effects. But we need to first look at epsilon for greenhouse geyser and for wind felt. And you can see in this case one is 0.851 and the other is 0.886. The number that we want to keep in mind when we're looking at these two values is 0.75. If we have values here that are less than 0.75, we're gonna interpret the greenhouse geyser correction, which is down here. If the value is greater than 0.75, we're gonna interpret the wind felt correction. In this case, we can see that both of these values are greater than 0.75, so we would interpret the wind felt. So moving down to the test of within subjects effects, we can see the first row is sphericity assumed. Uh, we can't use that value because we violated the assumption of sphericity. Then we have greenhouse geyser. Again, we're not gonna use that one because we have an epsilon value here of greater than 0.75. And then we have wind felt. This is the one we would interpret. And you can see it is statistically significant. Another option that you have when you have data that has violated the assumption of sphericity is to conduct a MANOVA, a multivariate analysis of variance, as opposed to a repeated measures ANOVA, because MANOVA does not have the assumption of sphericity. So now I'm going to go back and conduct another repeated measures ANOVA, except this time I'm going to add program as a between subjects factor. That's the only change I'm going to make. I click OK. And you can see for Mockley's test of sphericity, now I have a p-value of 0.142. It's a non-statistically significant result, so I can assume that I've met the assumption of sphericity. So in this case, if we were interested in depression times program, we would use the sphericity assumed row. And we have a p-value here of 0 0.002. A few other important points related to Mockley's test of sphericity. This test has a tendency to miss violations of sphericity when working with small samples and it has a tendency to detect violations of sphericity that aren't actually there in large samples. Also, Malkley's test of sphericity is only interpretable if we have at least three dependent variables. I hope you found this video on Malkley's test of sphericity to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.